we're at Southfield High School. And, uh, man, I, I'm i thinking this is the place where God's really going to blow this thing up. Why wouldn't he? I'm from Southfield, called to Southfield, wife mm-hmm. went to Southfield. Mm-hmm. I'm back. Mm-hmm. And it was literally the place where God cut me. Mm. He humbled me. Okay. Welcome to the Legacy Continues podcast. Well, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to episode five. It's already five. Can you believe it? I actually can't. <laughs> I'm actually yeah. shocked. It's moving quick, actually. Yeah. We're going to keep on going. Keep right. going. I love it. Listen, this is the Legacy Continues I love that. podcast. Yes, sir. Did you get it? K-E-N. Yeah, you know, that's what I love about it. Continues. When you first told me that, I was like, okay, that's catchy. But then when I saw it on paper, I was like, yeah. oh, that's catchy. Yes, sir. So while we're doing this, everybody has a legacy. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a legacy. You're either going to leave a good one mm-hmm. or a bad one. Mm-hmm. Are terrible ones. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to make sure that whatever legacy that you have, that it's a good one that you can be proud of. So that's what this podcast is about. We're focusing on four things. You remember what they are? Yeah, well, I remember it's the four Faith. L's. Faith. It's the four L's, yep. Family. Faith, family. Finance. Finances. Don't worry about the fourth one. Yeah, well. Fitness. We'll, we'll get to we'll, it. <laughs> that's going to be season four. But in season one, we're talking about faith. Uh-huh. We're talking yeah. about faith. And that's what we're going to talk about today, man. Yeah, awesome. Listen, um... I know we're going to jump off into, we were kind of talking last time about the start of and yeah. how you kind of got started. Yeah. And uh, for those that don't know, Crossover started yeah. at Sea Home. Yep, September 8th. No, September 18th, 2016. I remember the day. Okay. And uh, it started at Sea Home School, which uh, if you're not familiar with uh, Michigan, it was uh, in a pretty influential area. Actually, man, Birmingham has always been kind of yes, upscale. Yes, and so it started there, and um, you kind of made that transition out there. Why, though? I'm just curious as to why you made that transition out there. I definitely wasn't called to Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've said it before that I grew up in Southfield. My wife mm-hmm. grew up in Southfield. We wanted to be in Southfield, but during that time, there was a consolidation of the schools. Okay. And so we couldn't get into any school in Southfield. So we, when we first started, we definitely wanted to be in a school. And so we had to go. To Birmingham, okay. see home high school. We had about two months before our launch. We didn't have anywhere to land. Uh-huh. And so there was an open door that got open. So we went to it. But that came with some <laughs> that came with some challenges. But we started uh, Birmingham Sea Home High School, September 18th, 2016. The first thing we cut, we're going to talk about this today. Uh-huh. The cutting place <laughs> yeah. was the coffee and donut. That's the first thing we cut. <laughs> My favorite story. <laughs> You've heard me mention that before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, uh, man, so we started with about 202 people. I'm not counting. 202 people. Okay. And uh, <laughs> then we grew it to about 40 people. Yeah. And uh, it was in that place where I'm a finance guy. Sure. We're going to get to that in season three. And I'm looking at the numbers, P. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we got yeah. about six more weeks. <laughs> but this thing is not going to work. And yeah. so, ultimately, I don't know if God ever gives you a dream. And then you follow his dream and you know you're in the will of the Lord, but it's like this bait and switch uh-huh, uh-huh. that happens in your life. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, sure. And so has that ever happened to you? God gives you a dream, oh, you're obedient. Absolutely. And then it's like he just switched it up on you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I've had that happen, man. When I was doing the whole music thing and traveling, yeah, man, yeah. and you know, ministering through music, and I just knew, man, oh yeah, this is God. God's all in this. Yeah. Until I got out there on the road, man, and started realizing, man, who was like, Yeah, nah, hold on a minute, man. This <laughs> he ain't in this, man. <laughs> When you stranded on the side of a road, North Dakota, man, you know, it's like, yeah. and it's minus 20 degrees because of the windshield factor. Because out there, mm-hmm. cause they have nothing but cow country path, man. And yeah. it's like wide open. There's no buildings to prevent the wind blowing, man. That's a whole nother story. We'll come back. That's to a that. whole nother story. Cow pastures. Oh, and- yeah, man. Oh, yeah, buddy. <sighs> Why does God sometimes give us what I believe is the bait and switch? Mm-hmm. It's because if we knew the reality of what it was going to be, we would never follow and be obedient. Absolutely. Right. So he always gives us the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then we're like, what's up, God? Yeah. And so that's exactly what happened when we started our church, right? Any person that starts something new, whether it's a business, a church, ministry, family, we going to do it better than everybody else. Oh, everybody says that. Or you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right? That's right. And then the reality comes. (laughs) (laughs) And you find yourself... In a dry season. I said it last episode. Uh-huh. My second message was, this is not what I expected. <laughs> that was the topic. And I'm looking and I'm like, what did we do wrong? This is, this is terrible. And so I knew right away that we had to make a shift. We had to make a change. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And so I'm already calling the phones. I'm calling. I'm calling back up to Southville High School. Like, hey, I went to Southville High School. Right. Can we get back into some school in the Southfield district? Now, I remember being on the phone and a lady told me, well, um, no school wants you. The middle schools don't want you. The elementary schools don't want you. But, hey, there's actually, there was actually a church in Southfield High School for four years. Okay. That's why I really didn't even look at Southfield High School. Okay. But she told me they were leaving. Mm. So January 1st, 2017, we went to Southfield High School. Mm. Now, I remember a couple of weeks before that, I was preaching a message, and we were at Seahome High School. We are going through the book of Joshua. Okay. And if you know the book of Joshua, they're, they're going into the promised right. land. And my sermon series was, take the land! <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take the land! And I remember <laughs> I remember going up to Southwood High School right after service uh-huh. when the other church was leaving, and I'm, I'm helping them move out. Yeah, like, you- I'm looking like, make sure y'all get all that equipment. <laughs> I'm like, this is it, man. Yeah. God is bringing your boy back <laughs> to the high school that he roamed. My wife went to that school. Yeah. I just thought this was the moment God was going to blow it up. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm not counting, but they had 703 seats in the auditorium. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I really believe yeah. we're going to be doing two services in two weeks. Okay. Okay. And uh, God's good. But uh, <laughs> we did all the promotion. Right. We did all the mailers. Yeah. Listen. You I follow I, the plan. I follow yes. the plan. Yes. 75,000 piece yeah. mailer, 15,000 yeah. emptied out the bank account. <laughs> and guess how many people came I mean from it. that mailer? Three. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, you that's, know, a, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing. You know. And I remember I spent ten dollars on Facebook and ten people came. I was like, for me, I was yeah. like, I'm never doing a mailer again because that ROI. But you is follow terrible. the plan though. But that's the scary part. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. People don't understand when you're doing a church plant, there's people who have done it before you yeah. and they give you this plan mm-hmm. like it's supposed to work. Yeah. And yeah. so when it doesn't work, doesn't work. What are you supposed to do? So we're at Southfield High School. And uh, man, I, I'm thinking this is the place where God's really going to blow this thing up. Why wouldn't mm-hmm. he? I'm from Southfield, called to Southfield, wife mm-hmm. went to Southfield. Mm-hmm. I'm back. Mm hmm. And it was literally the place where God cut me. Mm. He humbled me. Okay. And there's a story in the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 17, where Elijah goes to King Ahab and he says, at my word, there's not going to be either no rain Mm -hmm. nor dew for three years. Mm -hmm. And then God tells Elijah, the prophet of God, the man of God, he says, go to a place called Kareth. Uh Kareth means cutting. So, Elijah, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to a place to get cut. <laughs> right. And that's exactly what happened to me. And, yeah. and for some of us, you might not be thinking about this, but oftentimes when you're following Jesus, sometimes it's to a place where you might get cut. Why does he do that? That's the place of humbling you. That's the place of total dependency. Absolutely. Have you ever had that, man, where you feel God just used a season of your life just oh, yeah. to cut you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, without question. I mean, when I was in uh, when I was working at uh, the church I worked at in North Carolina, that's exactly, man, that particular. There was a time period in that in that season yeah. and where God was definitely chiseling things away from my life and out of my life. And I think that happens to so many of us more than we realize, though. And it has to happen, though. Yeah. It yeah. has to happen. Why? Why? Well, I mean, it has to happen because, for one, because we're so full of ourselves. Yeah. We really are. We're so yeah. full of ourselves. We think, man, like you said, yeah. hey, man, I'm going to come in. We're going to have two services and two I really weeks believe in. that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I but, really, yeah. But most people do, though. Most, most people do. I tell people all the time, man. To really be called into ministry, there has to be a certain amount. Well, let me let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. To really be called into pastoring and shepherding and speaking yep. into people's life, there has to be a certain amount of like arrogance to that, man. Think oh, yeah. about it. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're literally saying, man, that you're going to speak God's word and God is speaking to you into yeah. people's lives. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And and. And we take it serious, right? Like, we take that serious because we know God's called us to do it. And so there's this idea of where you have to be broken, yeah. right? I mean, Paul talks about being broken, having that thorn in his side, right? He talks about being shipwrecked, being beaten, being <laughs> yeah. stuck. He goes down the list, and we always wanted to be like, oh. It's that famous line, <laughs> but your grace <laughs> is 
self-sufficient. <laughs> right. I remember standing on stage mm-hmm. preaching a sermon at Southfield High School uh-huh. in the auditorium. Sure. And you know how it is if it's an auditorium. Everybody's sitting in the back. Yeah, everybody. Everybody's sitting in the yeah, back. Yeah. So I'm on this big stage, <laughs> and everybody's in the back. I remember the audio wasn't working. I just had to go to the crowd and start talking. We tried to do the whole pipe and drape, like, on the sides. And I remember my wife told me, man, this place is like a haunted house. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> she told you. Yes. That's what she said to you? It, it did. Your wife said that to you. Yeah, because it was dark in there. You had the pipe and drape. <laughs> Like, like you didn't even know where to sit hold down. On a second, like, but this is your help me though telling you this though. Yes. See, that's what I'm saying. See, yeah. that's my whole point right yeah. there. See, and so you need listen. Thank you, Sister Neither. Thank you, Sister Mayo. That's my wife, y'all. They keep us humble, bro. They remind us, like, yeah, okay, you know what? Still take the trash out, <laughs> man of God. Take the yeah. trash out, man of God. You yeah. know? So you're not Pastor P in the house. No, you can't be. <laughs> I'm not no Pastor P. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, nah, dude, take the trash out. What you doing? Show that snow. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so I think that's important because I think we need that to remind us we're servants of God. Yeah. We're his servants. Yes, we are called to a specific task. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel like, man, we've elevated it and we've made it something that it was never intended to be. But that's a whole nother conversation. Go ahead, but, man. But this is the crazy part. Southfield High School was the place of cutting, Mm -hmm. but it was the place of obedience. I know God told me to go there. Sure. And if you get back to the story of Elijah, Uh he said, I want you to go to Kareth, right? Uh Uh And he said, yeah, but he was getting provided for that. Sure. It was ravens were providing the ravine. Now, this doesn't make sense because ravens are scavengers. (laughs) Right. Ravines only work during rainy seasons. (laughs) Right. Because of his own prophecy being fulfilled, he's now in a dry season. Yeah, that's good. Right? That's good. But then it says in verse 7 of 1 Kings 17, it says, now the brook has dried up. Now, wait a minute. There's some seasons in your life you can do the same thing and get results. Uh But then if you keep doing it, you have no results. Mm. Right? That's good. And so God, I know, is like, okay, go to Southfield High School. I'm thinking, here we go. This is about to be awesome. I'm about to blow my kingdom, excuse me, his kingdom up. (laughs) And I love what the text says, but the brook dried up. Mm, mm. It dried up. And I remember we were doing a leadership meeting, and everybody in that leadership meeting was complaining about everything, right? This isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't working. And here's just a leadership nugget. Mm -hmm. The people in your congregation, the people you lead, take on the culture of you. Mm. That's good. What I've done, I created so a, true. What I did, I created an atmosphere of so complaining. True. So true. That's so good, though. So I cut our leadership team for six months. I cut mm-hmm. having meetings. And for the next six months, I stopped being a pastor and I started being a son again. Mm. I mean, in six months, we went through like six worship leaders. I mean, it was just a difficult time. That's a whole nother season on a podcast. But go back, though, and explain what you mean by yeah. you stop being a pastor and you start being a son again. Explain that. So that we understand what you're saying. We can get so caught up in the titles. Absolutely. That's my point. There you go. And the performance and the perfection. Yes. I am not a pastor first. Come on, man. I'm a child of God first. Absolutely. Absolutely. In other words, even when I come to scripture, I don't come to scripture looking for a sermon. Right. (laughs) Right. Because I read the Bible out of my devotional life, that's why I have sermons. Amen. 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 I love this quote by A.W. Tozer. He says, it is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. Mm. Can I I say that one more time? You need to actually (laughs) say that one more time. It is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly Mm -mm. until he has hurt him deeply. Why why do you think that? Until he has hurt him deeply. Think about that, though. That's powerful, man. Because when when Dr. Tozer is saying that, he's not talking about somebody else. He's talking about God the Father, our Heavenly Father. We're his children. Yeah. Like, as a parent, you know, we don't want to hurt our kids, yes. man, right? Yes. Like, that's not the goal. The goal is not to see how we can hurt our children. But we do have a responsibility to take them and mold them and shape them into yeah. who they need to become as productive citizens in the <clears throat> kingdom of God and in this world, man. And so when we stop and think about the beauty of what yeah. he's saying here. God is stripping us down, man, and breaking us. I love what you said. And I always appreciate your transparency and your yeah. honesty. This is why this is so good, this podcast. Mm-hmm. 
because you said, you know, I'm going to build my kingdom. Oh, excuse me. I mean, <laughs> right? But that's real, man. But, but here's the thing. We don't notice our arrogance and pride in the moment. Mm. It's not until we look back. Mm. I didn't think I was doing that then. <laughs> but as I look back, right. Ken, that was really right. about you. Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so mad at certain things? Yeah. This is what I think sometimes. Like, as long as we're being faithful, God yes. is pleased with that. Absolutely. There's sometimes we leave events or we leave ministries saying, oh, this was terrible. And okay. God is like, this is good. Okay, but hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on a second. That's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit, man, because I love what you just said there, man. As long as we're being faithful. So you're here, you're here at Southfield High School, and you have mm. how many people before you start realizing, hey, you know what, man? It's just about me being faithful. Yeah. Now, I didn't learn that lesson at Southfield High School. <laughs> okay. That's good. <kinda> okay. <laughs> one step at a time, my brother. <laughs> I was looking at the checking account. <laughs> and I said, something's going to have to change. But this is what I want you to know about a cutting season, right? John chapter 15 talks about this whole idea that that a pruning season, mm -hmm. that when fruit is being grown, there's a pruning season that takes place. Now, now wait a minute. If fruit is being grown, why mm -hmm. would you prune it? Why mm -hmm. would you take it away? Right. <laughs> to me, just let it grow. Right. Why? Because there's pesticides, there's things attached to the vine and the branches that shouldn't be there, that although it's growing, perhaps it'll be a weed or it will mess out the other things that are growing. Yeah. So anytime there's growth in our life, the first thing that will happen is a pruning season, mm. but it's to grow more fruit. Yeah. So I believe what God was doing at Southfield High School, it was just a pruning season. Mm. See, everybody that's with you right now yeah. can't stay with that's you. Right. That's just the reality. That's right. Yeah. And if people are really with you, then they can't leave. That's right. That's excellent. And so, man, <laughs> I feel like we're, we've been six years of ministry. It's been five and a half years of a pruning season. Has it been six years of ministry? It's been six years. Wow. Okay. Six years <clears throat> of ministry. And I think the most of it's been a pruning season, but it's not really pruning the people out in the pews. It's pruning you yeah. in the process. Yeah. Uh, when I was at seminary, Dr. Moore, he said, people make the mistake of thinking when they're starting a church that God cares more about the church than he cares more about the man. Mm. The good things in ministry, the good things in our church are probably the areas that I'm strong in. But the things that you don't like, that you roll your eyes, it's a direct reflection of the inadequacies that you have. Wow. And oftentimes we take it out <laughs> on the people in the congregation. Y'all not inviting nobody? <laughs> right. When's the last time you invited somebody? <laughs> right. right. Y'all not sharing the gospel? When's the last time you shared the right. gospel? Right. And so oftentimes, don't, don't, it's like with our kids, right? <laughs> right. Sometimes we get angry at our kids, mm -hmm. but it's really a reflection yeah. 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 <laughs> of how we are. Absolutely. I talk about this all the time, man. Uh, I, I've been going to watch a few basketball games. My son's playing basketball. I just look at parents sometimes, yeah. like getting so upset at their kids. You got to make that shot. You couldn't make that shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're getting so angry at your child because it's yeah. a reminder of how bad you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. And so we put this pressure on people. And uh, I just remember being at Southfield, man. <sighs> Again, I'm trying to remind you, I grew up in Southfield sure. Public School System, sure. went to the high school. My wife did, too. Right. Everything in me. Yeah. This is the season. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we about to break the code. I don't even know what the code is. <laughs> but we about to break it. <laughs> and that's where God broke me. And that's where God broke me. And I just remember we were probably there for about three months. I'm like, okay. all right, something's got to change. Something's mm -hmm. got to give. And I love the story of, I think it's Genesis 22, uh, where the Bible says, Abraham, take your son, mm -hmm. right? Isaac, mm -hmm. I want you to slay your son. Like, can, yeah. you, can you imagine that? I can't. That's crazy. I can't. He said, I want you to slay your son. And right before he's about to slay his son, what happens? God says, stop. Yeah. And this is a principle that I learned. Not only do you have to know what God said, mm -hmm. you also got to know what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Don't miss that. Yeah, that's good, though. He said, <clears throat> slay your son. Yeah. But then he said, don't do it. <laughs> right. You cannot just listen to what God has said. Mm -hmm. You also need to understand what he's saying. Yeah. So in other words, when you get a word from God, yeah. you have to continually 
allow him to unpack what that word means. That's good. Come on, preachers. That's now, good. this is good. Yeah. I know I said that we're going to do this, but this is what the Lord is saying. Yeah, so right. I preached that sermon. Right. I, I know I said we're going to take the land at Southfield right. High School, and we're going to do two services right. in two weeks, and 5,000 right. people are going to be here. Right. But the Lord is saying. Yeah. <laughs> we got to move. And uh, <laughs> so already within a six-month period, six worship teams, mm, mm, mm. two locations, mm. And uh, we move again. This mm. time we move to Farmington Hills. Okay. To the Caustic Center, which okay. is right across the street from my house. Okay. Now, the interesting part about that is prior to us planning a church, a few years beforehand, I actually went to a service at the Caustic Center. I remember my, my saying that if we ever start a church service, this would be a good place. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's right across right. the street from my house. Sure. I, could, I could walk there. Right. And uh, I knew it was God. You want to know why? Mm. When I said what the, when I went in, I was like, what's the price? And they said it was only $1,000 a month. Yeah. I was like, that's the Lord. Because I was paying like $1,500 a week. <laughs> so we moved to the Caustic Center. So, But it took a place of cutting to help me realize what God was doing next. But here's the thing, too. For two years in our ministry, I don't know if you knew this, we didn't have worship at all in our church. Wow. I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, because this was a season we were going back and forth trying to get different worship mm-hmm. leaders, and uh, you know, that's a yeah. whole other thing. We talked about it. <laughs> we talked about it, yeah. And uh, I remember the Lord just telling me again, like, leave it alone. Yeah. And I'm thinking it's going to be a week, yeah. two weeks. It yeah. went on two years. Wow, we. And I remember going on a prayer walk. How do we find out the Caustic Center? They're like, that's a place we can have a church. I was on a yeah. prayer walk because yeah. when you're in a season of cutting, you start praying again. Mm-hmm. And I remember the Lord just saying, look up. I'm like, okay. Man, there's the building right there. And here's the crazy part. My my kids were already doing classes there in terms of, like, basketball, okay. gymnastics. Okay. And I never even thought about having a church inside there. So I literally just walked in was mm. like, hey, would you guys have a church in here? They were like, yeah, cool. Yeah. So we ended up going there. But we went there. And, uh, man, we were worshiping off the YouTube screens mm. for two years. But mm. here's the cool thing. I was like, man, we got – well, let's say it happened nowadays. This is how you do it. Maverick City's going to be in the house today. We got Tasha Cobbs in the house today. <laughs> Click play. That's what you did. <laughs> We had your favorite artist. Right. But I learned something, though, yeah. about that. That, uh, you know, these, <clears throat> these teenagers and young adults, they really don't care because they're used to watching things off a of screen. Yeah, absolutely. And that's been amazing, man. And so, yeah, we went there at the Cosmic Center for about two years. And I remember I was talking to uh, Norfleet Shoemake. He's like a worship leader, great pastor. And he said, Ken, uh, you know what you got to do, right? I'm like, I'm like, what? You got to become the worship leader in your church. You got to sing worship. <clears throat> now, <laughs> we're talking about being cut. Uh-huh. See, one of the things when we didn't have worship, people thought I was the cool pastor. You want to yeah. know why? Why? Because I was the first person you would see in the parking lot. Uh-huh. And they like, oh, this pastor's so cool. He meets you in the parking uh-huh. lot. Oh, my God. I mean, they're doing Google reviews. Uh-huh. Most pastors, they're just in their office. But Pastor Ken, he's in the parking lot. This was, this, was the, this was the Google reviews you were getting? Oh, yeah. Okay. I had to <laughs> repent to my church. <laughs> Guys, I'm not the cool pastor. You, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not the cool pastor you think I am. I'm embarrassed. Come on. Because we don't have worship. Mm. So to avoid it, I go outside and greet you. Mm. And I come in when it's my time. Yeah, <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, And I remember I had to get up. Okay, God, I got to lead worship. So the first person I talked to was an audio person. I said, yeah. listen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're going to get our vocals right next week. <laughs> now, I don't know if it was God or the enemy, but, I mean, <laughs> you could barely hear my voice coming through that <laughs> microphone. But I'm going to tell you, man, it took you, it, it took great humility, but also there was humility within our people. Mm. And it did something because God was reminding me, like, Ken, are you waiting for a person to come to worship me? Mm. Mm. Like, is that what you're doing? Mm. Are you really waiting for someone to come to worship me? Mm. And so, man, out of that Sunday, that's when God started to bring people who were just called to come to our church. And it's like, hey, what do you do? Hey, man, I lead worship. Yeah. And that's when we started gathering our worship team. Wow. But it only happened through a season of brokenness. Yeah, yeah. Why did it go on two years? Because it took me two years to be humble enough to yeah. 
to look foolish enough yeah. to put myself in a position. Maybe that could have happened in a week. Sure. I don't know. You can't speed up God's timing, but you right. can prolong God's time. Come on, that's good. That's you know, perfect. The children of Israel are supposed to be yes. in the promised land in 11 days, yeah. but it took them 40 years. Yeah. Come on. That's real. Because good. of their attitude. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And so <clears throat> I remember we're at the Caustic Center, man, and it's right across the street from my house. Mm -hmm. And um, But it was no pressure. What I mean by that? It was only $1,000 a month. Yeah. So it's like, if you didn't show up, I'm cool. Yeah. I got it in my pocket. Right. We're there for two years. I mean, I'm talking about service started at 11. I'm leaving my house 1055. <laughs> I can walk to church right. if I want to. Right. And I just felt the Lord just saying, man, like, you're not moving by faith. Mm. See, it's one thing to have things easy, but it's a whole other thing when you become complacent in ministry. We're not called to be complacent. Yeah. And too many people want to be comfortable. Yeah, that's right. You're not called to be comfortable. <clears throat> that's right. You're called to move by faith. That's right. And so we're in a season of decent growth. It was easy. Mm -hmm. No stress. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. But the Lord started to reveal, hey, man, there's something else that I have for you. Wow. And, uh, man, I just remember being in dry seasons. And when you're in a dry season, you don't like it. Yeah. But when you come out of a dry season, there's an experience that you get with God that you could not have if you weren't in a season of cutting mm. or a dry season, mm. right? I want you to talk to me real quick just about a maybe a dry season that you've had in your life, and Man. now that you look back on it, it was necessary, right? You, you don't think it's necessary in the moment. Oh, yeah. You know, but yeah. now you know it was necessary. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I was in North Carolina, man, like I was saying earlier, man, I had a season, man, where I was literally traveling. I lived an hour mm -hmm. away from the church I worked at, man, yeah. and – so I had an hour's worth of time, man, where I got to spend with the Lord driving to this church, man, one way, yeah. plus an hour on the way back. <clears throat> and in the process of this, this situation, man, where yeah. I really wrestled with some things, man, you know, where, uh, and I can be transparent and be honest with it, man. There were some things, man, where I just began to even question, man, my, my, uh, my relationship with God. Mm. And if I even really, man, believed that he was who he said he was based on what I had studied, went to school for, yep. man, yep. and had been dissecting and pulling apart for years. It's easy man. when you're writing papers. Oh, yeah, simple. <laughs> it's simple when you're doing all that, man. You know what I'm saying, man? And it's easy, man, when you're actually doing it. But, man, I can remember driving, man, you know, man, to uh, to, to Charlotte, man. I lived, you know, lived like I said, I lived an hour away, man, in, in Winston. And, man, I'm on that highway, and I'm just traveling, and I'm having these conversations where I'm wrestling with God, but he's not responding. Mm. he's not talking back, man. Yeah. And I got to tell you, man, it was making me question a lot of things, guys, yeah. because I really began to say, like, hey, man, what's the deal? Yeah, You know, are you here, man? What's going on, man? Because, you know, I was dealing with the challenge, man, of, of us being where we were at because of the, as I, you know, you know, we get older. Yeah. Guys, if you're not older, you're going to get older, okay? Mm. And 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 I, mm. my body began to tell me, you can't keep making this drive like this, yeah. you know, almost every single day. Yep. You can't do this. You you know, in a, in a year or two, you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, God, you know, something's got to give. Yeah. Something has to give. He's not responding. He's not saying anything to me. Mm. And so now I'm getting frustrated, man. You know, I'm like, no, we got to make this work. We got to pull this together, man. I can't yep. keep doing this, man. Everybody at the church is telling me, man, how, how much longer can you keep doing this? Because up to this point, I had been doing this for like almost five years. Five years? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were thinking like three months. No, nah, man, <laughs> I've been doing this for almost up to five years, Ooh. man. So yeah. I'm tearing up. Listen to me. I'm tearing up cars, man. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, talking about, I'm tearing cars up, man. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm putting just this wear and tear on these vehicles, making making these, uh, making these this journey, man, you know, to go do, you know, uh, God's work mm. you know, as yeah. the man of God, you know. <laughs> You know how we do, man. And yeah. so I'm just like, and I can remember, man, I can mm -hmm. remember the executive pastor of the church saying to me one day, and and, and, and I got angry when he said it. Yeah. I got angry when he said it, but when yeah. I stopped yeah. and looked back now, he was so spot on. He said, Pierre, I was sick one day, and mm -hmm. I came in anyway. You know, come in, come in, yeah. it's Sunday morning service. I got to be there. Yeah. They need me. Yep. He said, Pierre, he said, let me tell you something. He said, mm -hmm. there's no gold medals being handed out for anyone that does anything foolish. Mm. He said, you got to get more organized in terms of developing the teams that you're over, man, yeah. in terms of the people that you're called to lead. He said, and then, man, you don't have to worry about, man, being 
here yeah. when you're sick and you shouldn't be here. Yeah. He's like, you're not helping us. You're yeah. hurting us. Yeah. And, I, you know, man, I got angry when he said it because I felt like, what? Who you man, Who you talking to, man? Y'all need me. But sometimes we, we want to feel needed. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We love to feel needed, man. In our cynical <laughs> self, sometimes <laughs> if we're not at church or teaching, whatever that vocation is, we want it to mess up. Yes. I mean, y'all, y'all need me. <laughs> That's real talk. Because here's the thing. If everything goes all right, it's like, well, maybe they don't need you no more. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's real what you're saying. Yeah. And so for me, what happened was, man, I ended up, man, one day, I can remember, man, and, and to your point about the faith the, the faith piece, I remember, man, God was not talking, guys. He was not saying a single thing. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was like, okay, you know what? Then... <clears throat> Maybe you're not who you say you are. Yeah. And I can remember, man, my son's a pastor. Man, I can remember hitting him up. Man, I can remember, yeah. man, hitting up my mom, who's an evangelist. I can remember hitting my sister up, man. I mean, you, Hey, man, up. you know it's bad. You got to hit your son up. Bruh. I need you to father me hey, right man, now. Hey, <laughs> man, real talk, dude. No, I was like, yo. And, you know, everybody was just like, we praying for you. Nobody nobody had any special words to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we praying for you. Yeah. You know, you're going through this season. We get it. Everybody's, yeah. you know, everybody, if, if you haven't been there, guys, you will get there. And yeah. when you get there, reach out to Pastor Ken Neither at. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, the rea- <laughs> but no, the reality of it was, and then one day, to mm-hmm. your point, one day I remember the Lord telling me, do you trust me? That's all he said. Do you mm-hmm. trust me? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, now you want to speak, huh? <laughs> it was like nothing else. It was like, do you trust me? And I was like, I don't have a choice. He said, yeah. then move. Mm. Where am I moving to, God? Mm. Where am I moving to? He said, don't worry about that. Yeah. Just move. Yeah. Man, I told my wife, I was like, hey, we great move. Where we going? I don't know yet, but we great move, though. All right, Abraham. Hey, literally, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know yet. She's like, I tell you what, you go ahead and move. I'm moving into my mama's house because her mother lived around the corner Ooh. from us, man. And I was like, really? <laughs> and then she was dead serious, man. So, yeah. you know, man, we're packing up the stuff, okay, man. You we're know we don't edit these podcasts. Oh, no, that's okay, fine, okay, man. Okay. No, my wife is good with it because I'm only telling the truth. And, but again. I'm stick right to the some, script. Okay. <laughs> but again, even in that, though, listen to me. Some of you guys I need, to, need to hear this. Even in that, there was some growth that needed to come out of that for me and my relationship with my wife, because Mm. a lot of times we think, man, again, as men, a God, man, as, as leaders or even women of God, as leaders, we think, man, that, you know, Mm. is what we say, man, she was there to help me. Right. And so it was my job to start at home leading her correctly first. Mm. Right. And so I was like, Hey, you know what? I know what God's called me to do. We're going to do it. Gonna make it happen. So you then, don't so you don't believe in the principle when people say, if you take care of the house of God, <laughs> he'll take care of your house. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started with that one. We're not gonna, we're not gonna heard go that there. Before, right? Oh, I've heard it, but we're not gonna even go there, man. We go like right, we stick we stick it strictly scriptural, right? So I can remember, man, I'm driving to this location, man, and I remember the Holy Spirit saying to me, contact. It was a gentleman um, named named Mr. I used to call him Mr. T. He was a, he was a, he was one of our drummers for one of the praise teams mm-hmm. at the church. And me and Mr. T had a great relationship, very very wealthy wealthy man. Yeah. And the Lord's like contact. You still got his number? Oh yeah, yeah I can get you. Him. But anyway, he was like <laughs> the Lord was like contact Mr. T. Contact his name is Terry Ter- Terry McKinney. Terry, if you see this man, you are, you don't even understand how much you bless me. And Thank so you. I'm gonna give you a call, Terry. <laughs> gonna we're, give you a call, Terry. We're doing a building campaign right now. <laughs> That's right. So Terry, so I, I remember calling Terry, and so. And I was like, hey, Terry, do you happen to have anything available? Like any, because he, he on he owned real estate. Yeah. He uh, he owned car dealerships. The guy had money, man. And just a brilliant businessman. And he's like, yeah, I, I actually do, man. And I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. He's like, well, what are you looking for? I said, well, I'm trying to relocate. And he was one of the bigger people that was like, really like in my corner, like, Peter, you got to get, yeah. quit making that trip. You know, he's like, yeah. you got to get closer. So, man, I remember calling him, man. And he was like, yeah, come on by the house, man. We'll talk. So I drive it to his house, man, get out there. Beautiful home. Very beautiful home. Very, very beautiful home. Mm-hmm. Gated home, man. You All know, right. the whole shebang, man. Push the button. Yeah, buzz you in from this oh, yeah. house kind of deal, right? right? One of them situations. So I get in. We're laughing and talking, having a good old time. And I'm like, listen, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relocating. I'm trusting God. I'm stepping out in faith. He's like, oh, yeah, I got, a per- I got the perfect place for you. I said, okay, mm-hmm. well, great. You know, I'm thinking he's going to set me up with, like, a condo or something, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. something yeah. simple. So I can call my wife, like, hey, we got blah, blah, we blah. Got, come yeah. on, do it. We good, baby. Come on. <laughs> come on, honey. We good. He's like, so a lot of people don't know this. I'm going to get married. I said, oh, that's awesome, Terry. Praise God. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get married, man, you know. He said, but my wife doesn't want to leave Alabama. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, but I don't want to leave my house sitting here unattended because I don't want anybody to squat it. 
Mm. He said, I need somebody here, man, living here so that nobody comes in. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I'm thinking like, mm. okay, cool. Like, that's awesome that you, I don't know why you're telling me this, but that's awesome that yeah. you're telling me this. So praise for God you. for you. Yeah. What about me, buddy? <laughs> I need a place today like yeah. ASAP. He's like, how much you, how much you looking to spend? Now you guys got to understand in North Carolina, the cost of living is way different than it is in most parts of the country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but especially even in Michigan. Yep. I said, well, Terry, I said, I got, this is a true story. I said, I got $750 that mm. I can spend a month. Some of y'all mm. right now, some of y'all right now, man, ready to relocate to North Carolina. 750 <laughs> I said, I got $750 <laughs> I can spend a month. And so he's like, okay, that'll work. I said, cool, what you got for me? I'm thinking two or three bedroom, you know, simple, something mm. simple. He's like, you're going to move in right here. I said, Terry, this is like a $3 million house. Uh huh. He's like, no, no, I understand that. I said, I only got $750 a month. Let me say that again. $750 is, what, a month or $750 is what I can afford to give a month, Terry. Mm. He's like, I understand that. I'm telling you, you're going to move in here. Yeah. And I'm like, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. I, 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 was, I was mortified by the goodness of God when you just stop and just listen and be obedient. Yes, he's not speaking sometimes, but he's speaking. And I say this mm. all the time. I teach this all the time at, at, at CTAB whenever I'm teaching or even in my own stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. God is always talking. The question is, are we listening? Mm, say that one more time. God is always talking. The question is, are we listening? Yeah. See, because we're looking to hear what we want to hear. We have our own <clears throat> preconditioned and preconceptions of what things should be and how it should be. Yep. In, in my mind, I really thought it was going to be a scenario where he was going to put me in. That's what I was looking for, Ken. I was looking for that. And yeah. God was like, no, 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 no. I got this. Yeah. And, man, let me tell you something, man. When we moved in, well, when, <clears throat> oh, well I moved in first because my wife was still in with her mom at the time. You know, so. But <laughs> how did you convince her to come to where you were at when she saw it? Oh, bro, let me tell you something. When she, I said, hey, why don't you come on down? Let's hang out. She's like, okay. She yeah. said, you got a place. I said, yeah, I got mm -hmm. a place. Uh -huh. Man, when she showed up. She thought you was gonna have a food time. Oh, bruh. She thought I was gonna be living like out of <laughs> like out of a storage, you know, one of those storage places, man. You know what I'm saying? And when she pulled up, man, she's like, You are kidding me. And I was like, look, all I can tell you is, man, this is a move of God. Now here's the crazy part. Mm -hmm. I only had the 750 a month to give for the rent. He was like, Don't worry about nothing else. I got it. No utilities. Nothing. I got it. That's what he told me. I said, he said, this is his exact words to me. 750, yeah, that's enough to cover my lawn care. <laughs> <laughs> this place, guys, sat on 14 acres. Mm. Had a horse stable, man. It was amazing. When I tell you, man, that it was a blessing beyond any other blessing, man, that I've ever, ex well, I mean, I've experienced some pretty amazing things in my life. But that was one of those things where it just showed the goodness of God when we just humble ourselves, man, trust God. I'm talking about really trust him wholeheartedly. I'm talking about take a leap of faith. We love okay. to talk about that, man. But uh, I don't know if I need to be trying to do this because it just sounds crazy. And that was out of a dry season. Oh, yeah, man, because he wasn't yeah. not talking to me. So, so watch this. This is so good. So Elijah, go to a place. I'll yes. show you. Yes. Right? He says, go to care. That's the place of cutting. Yes. He says, there, there's going to be some ravens to take care of. Absolutely. You. And they're being provided for. I mean, it ain't great, yeah. but, you know, he's taking care of them. Yeah. Then it says the brook has dried up, yeah. right? Yeah. But then it says, now I want you to go to this widow. Yeah. And what is the point of this? Expect God out of a dry season to show up in places unexpected. Mm. And that's exactly what he did. Go to a widow. Yeah. How is a widow right. going to take care of me? Right. How does this move make sense? It mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. at all, yeah. right? And that's yeah. I was just thinking about that because that's yeah. where I was going, and you just you just brought yeah. the point home. Yeah, no, yeah. that's exactly right, though. Expect and, God and, to show up in unexpected places. Expect, that's, that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. Say that again. Yeah. Expect out of a dry season. Here's the good news if you're in a dry season. Expect God to show up. In unexpected places, but you have to take advantage of a dry season. That's so beautiful, man. That's in other so words, the dry season, God is not trying to do something to change your circumstances. Yeah. He's trying to change you in the circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. That's that good. felt good. I'm gonna say that one more <laughs> that time. That felt really good because it's the truth, man. Oftentimes when we pray, we want God to change our circumstances. Yep, the first right. thing He'll do is change you in the yeah. circumstance. And this is what I was thinking about. 
the reason you cannot just depend on all the fuzzies and feelings with mm-hmm. God. See, when you first get saved, it's like, oh, you feel so great. Mm-hmm. And all oh, the presence of God, the mm-hmm. Shekinah glory is all mm-hmm. over you. But sometimes when you mature, you just have to depend yeah. on the nature and character yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. He's faithful. See, yeah. nobody shouts on that no. in church. No, of course not. <laughs> God's faithful. Right. He's constant. Right. You know? But you can't just get caught up in the emotions. Yeah. And I do believe God will make you emotional. That's yeah. not. But if you're just caught up in that, that's yeah. not a real that's right. re- relationship. How do you know when you're with your spouse, with your, with your kids, yeah. what that relationship? It's not just in the high moments. You know what you got yeah. in those low moments. Yeah. Yeah. In those dry seasons when, and I love what you said, God is always talking. We're not just, we're not listening. Yeah. So I was, I'm thinking about this. Sometimes if you're listening to the radio station, um, you're listening to it, you can hear it clearly, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But when you get across to about Ohio, yeah. what happens? <laughs> right. Static. Like yeah, and right. then you get to a place where you can't hear that radio yeah. station anymore. Yeah. Now, are the MCs, are the people on the radio station, have they stopped talking? <laughs> right. They're still doing their job. They're man. still doing their that's job. Right. They're still talking. Absolutely. What's the difference? That's right. That we got further away from yes. the time. Woo! That's good. That's good <laughs> right there, boy. There's seasons in your life God is talking. <laughs> but when you get far away from the tower, far away from God, mm. you no longer can be sensitive That's to powerful. his voice. That's powerful, man. That's so good. Man. And God does not scream because he's close to us. That's right. That's right. You That's know? exactly right. And so, man, Elijah, I want you to go to this widow. She going to yeah. take care of you. Yeah. Expect God to show up in yeah. unexpected places. So, yeah. listen, we're at Southwood High School. We're at the Caustic Center. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God. I just have a hunch. I have a sense that you're about to do something. Mm-hmm. Here it goes again. I get the call from the cops saying, you guys got to leave because of summer camp. And I'm like, God, what are we going to do? Right. But this is what I can tell you on the other side of it. Expect God to show up in unexpected yeah. places. We're going to stop right there. And I'm going to show good, you man. on the That's next excellent. episode excellent. where God shows up good, in an man. unexpected place. And the dry seasons are actually a blessing from God. Do yes. not waste your dry season. Yes. You can't speed up God's timing, That's but right. you can prolong God's That's timing. Right. That's good. And God is always listening. Or he's always talking. The question is, are we listening? Are we man? listening? So we're going to talk about that on the All next right, episode, man. man. <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. Go take care. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Legacy Continues podcast. This is what I want you to do. I want you to like, subscribe, and share this video. Let us know how this is connecting with you in the comments, and I can't wait to see you on the next episode.